I'm going to read from the Private Oral Exam Guide. I'm in Chapter 5, Cross Country Flight Planning, on page 5-30. This would be number 28. What general rules apply concerning traffic pattern operations at non-towered airports within Class E or G airspace? Each person operating aircraft to or from an airport without an operating control tower shall, in case of an airplane approaching to land, make all turns of that airplane to the left unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicating that turns should be made to the right, in which case the pilot shall make all turns to the right. B. In the case of an aircraft departing an airport, comply with any traffic patterns established for that airport. <clears throat> Number 29. When operating in Class D airspace, what procedures should be used when approaching to land on a runway with a visual approach slope indicator? Aircraft approaching to land on a runway served by a visual approach slope indicator shall maintain an altitude at or above the glide slope to a tower altitude until a lower altitude is necessary for a safe landing. Number 30. What is the fuel requirement for, for VFR flight at night? No person may begin a flight in an airplane under VFR conditions unless Concerning wind and forecast weather conditions, there is enough fuel to fly to the first point of attendant landing and, assuming normal cruising speed at night, to fly after that for at least 45 minutes. What is the fuel requirement for VFR flight rules during day? During the day, you must be able to fly to the first point of attendant landing and, assuming normal cruising speed, to fly after that for at least 30 minutes. Number 32. When operating an aircraft under VFR, in level cruising flight at an altitude of more than 3,000 feet above the surface, what rules apply concerning specific altitudes flown? When operating above 3,000 feet AGO but less than 18,000 feet MSO on a magnetic course of 0 to 179, flight at odd thousands, thousand foot MSO altitude plus 500 feet. When on a magnetic course 180 to 359, Flight even thousand foot MSL altitude plus five hundred feet. One eighties even. Hmm. One eighty three sixty. Number thirty three. What instruments and equipment are required for VFR day flight? For VFR flight during the day, the following instruments and equipment are required. Gotta have a tachometer, tachometer for each engine, oil pressure gauge for each engine. Manifold pressure gauge for each altitude engine, altimeter, temperature gauge for each liquid cooled engine, oil temperature, ah, tomato, oil temperature gauge for each air cooled engine, fuel gauge indicating the quantity in each tank, flotation gear, and at least one pyrotechnic signaling device if operating for higher over water beyond power off gliding distance from shore. L. Landing gear position indicator if the airplane has retractable gear. Airspeed indicator. Anti-collision light system. Aviation red and white for small airplanes certified after March 11, 1996. Magnetic direction indicator. Mercy locator transmitter. And safety belts and shoulder harness for each front seat in the aircraft manufactured after 1978. Tomato. And then flames. 2Fs. 34. Time. What instruments are required and what instruments and equipment are required for VFR night flight? For VFR night flight, all the instruments and equipment for VFR day flight are required, plus the following. Fuses. One spare set of three fuses of each kind required accessible to the pilot in flight. Landing light. If the aircraft is operated for hire. A. Anti-collision light system. Approved aviation red or white. Position lights, navigation lights. S is the source of electrical energy adequate for all installed electrical and radio equipment. So that's flaps. F-L-A-P-S, flaps. Number 35, what is an ELT? Emergency locator transmitter. Radio transmitter attached to the aircraft structure with operates from its own power source on 121.5 to 43.0 megahertz and the newer 406 megahertz. It aids in locating down aircraft by rating a downward sweeping audio tone two to four times a second. It's designed to function without human action after an accident. Can be operate 
operationally tested during the first five minutes after any hour. Note, digital 406 megahertz ELT should only be tested per the manufacturer's instructions. Number 36. Is an emergency located transmitter, transmitter required on all aircraft? No persons may operate a U.S. registered civil airplane unless... No persons may operate a U.S. registered civil airplane unless there is attached to the airplane an automatic type emergency located transmitter that is operable condition. Several exceptions exist including the following. Aircraft engage in training operations conducted entirely within a 50 nautical mile radius of the airport from which such local flight operation began. Aircraft engaged in design and testing. New aircraft engage in manufacture, preparation, and delivery. And aircraft engage in agricultural operations. Hmm. So those are your exceptions. Number 37. We're at six minutes. When must the batteries in a Mercy located transmitter be replaced or recharged if rechargeable? Batteries used in ELTs must be replaced or recharged if the batteries are rechargeable when the transmitter has been in use for more than one cumulative hour or when 50% of their useful life or rechargeable batteries, 50% of their useful life or charge has expired. Note the new expiration date for replacing or recharging the battery must be legibly marked on the outside of the transmitter and entered in the aircraft maintenance record. This date indicates 50% of the battery's useful life. Hmm. When the transmitter has been in use for more than one cumulative hour, or when 50% of their useful life or has expired. The new expiration date for replacing or recharging the battery must be legibly marked for replacing or recharging the battery must be legibly marked on the outside of the transmitter and enter in the aircraft maintenance record. This date includes 50% of the battery's useful life. Okie dokie. 38. What are the regulations concerning use of submittal oxygen on board an aircraft? At cabin pressure altitudes above 12,500 feet MSO, up to and including 14,000 feet MSO, for the part of the flight at those altitudes that is more than 30 minutes, the required minimum flight crew must be provided with and use supplemental oxygen. At cabin pressure altitudes at above 14,000 feet MSO, for the entire flight time of those altitudes, the required flight crew is provided with and uses supplemental oxygen. Hmm. So first one, if it's 12,500 feet to 14,000 feet, uh, that you know you're going to be doing it longer than 30 minutes, then you have to be provided, provided and use this supplemental option. If you're going to be above 14,000 feet MSO, uh, then the entire flight time you have to be provided supplemental oxygen and use it. At cabin pressure altitudes above 15,000 feet MSO, each occupant is provided with supplemental oxygen. 39. According to regulations, where is aerobatic flight of an aircraft not permitted? No person may operate an aircraft in aerobatic flight over any congested area of a city, town, or settlement, over an open air assembly of persons, within the lateral boundaries of the surfaces areas of class B, C, D, or E airspace designated for an airport, within four nautical miles of the center line of a federal airway, below an altitude of 1,500 feet above the surface, or when flight visibility is less than three statue miles. So remember that below an altitude of 1,500 feet below the surface. Good. 40. Define aerobatic flight. For the purposes of this section, aerobatic flight means an intentional maneuver involving an abrupt change in an aircraft's attitude or an abnormal attitude or abnormal acceleration not necessary for normal flight. Number 41. When are parachutes required on board an aircraft? A. Unless each occupant of the aircraft is wearing an approved parachute, no pilot of civil aircraft Carrying any persons other than a crew member may execute or intentionally maneuver that exceeds a bank angle of 60 degrees relative to the horizon or nose up or nose down attitude of 30 degrees relative to the horizon. And B, the above relation does not apply to flight test or for pilot certification or rating or spins and other flight maneuvers required by the regulations for any certificate or rating when given by a CFI or ATP instructing in accordance with 14 CFR 
So we'll hold off there. There was a chapter five, cross country flight planning. That's page five dash thirty four. See. Ya.